Quite some time ago, in the early days of MeshTastic, we did a video on MeshTastic devices as part of our popular Getting Started with MeshTastic series. Back then, the devices were very DIY and you had to piece everything together yourself and usually 3D print your own case or find some sort of enclosure for your device. Since then, there's been a number of ready-to-go devices that you can just purchase and pair to your phone to get started that we've done a number of videos on. Now, with a recent firmware that's been released for Mesh, Tastic, there's now devices that can be used standalone and not require a phone to be paired for them for use. For today's video, we'll be going over the different devices that can be used standalone and how you can flash this latest firmware with the new user interface. So let's dive into it. Before we get into it, this device here is a sense cap indicator from Seed Studio, and this was sent to me by Seed Studio. This BlackBerry looking device is a T-Deck Plus from LilyGo, and this was sent to me by LilyGo. Now I've had these devices for months now, but didn't want to do a video on them because they didn't really provide any major benefit over other MeshTastic devices because the MeshTastic UI really wasn't usable on them to make them a viable standalone device. So you would still have to pair them to a phone to use them, and earlier versions of the new user interface was very buggy and wasn't easy to install until now. Now let's get these devices flashed and have a look at the new user interface. The flashing process is simple. Just open up a Chromium-based web browser like Google Chrome, or if you're on Windows, you already have one called Microsoft Edge. Then we can go to the Flasher website, which is flasher.meshtastic.org. Now for this current firmware with the new user interface being a tech preview, it means that it could have some bugs and they don't want it available to the masses just yet. But there's a code you can enter to unlock it. When you get to the Flasher webpage, enter in the following code on your keyboard, and the B and A don't need to be uppercase, you can just press them. You can pause the video here if needed before we continue. Once we enter in the secret unlock code, the page should turn black, indicating that we've unlocked it. Now we're ready to select our device. The page says to plug the device in, but let's hold off on that for now and just click on select target device. On this page here, we can see our two current devices that support the new user interface, which are the LilyGo T-Deck and the Seed SenseCap Indicator. We'll go through the process on the LilyGo T-Deck first, so we'll go and select that device. Now let's click on the firmware dropdown and select Tech Preview from the pre-release section. And then we can click on Flash, then click on Continue here. Now let's grab our T-Deck, and if we look at the right side, there's a power switch. When it's in the up position, it's off, and the down position is on. But let's not turn that on just yet, though. On the flasher page, we don't need to do anything for step one or two. For step three, turn on the switch for full erase and install, then turn on the switch for MeshTastic UI. Now even though we haven't turned our device on and plugged it in yet, go ahead and click on the erase flash and install button. This will open up a box with serial connections and we need to take note of what we currently see here. Now we can get our device ready to flash and it needs to be in a flashing mode. And to do so, push and hold down the trackball on the front of the T-Deck and then turn the switch on. Now nothing will show up on the device's screen and that's completely normal. Now we can go ahead and plug it into the computer via the USB cable. Now if we look at the box with serial connections, we should see a new one likely called USB JTAG Serial Debug Unit. This will be our device and we can go ahead and flash it by selecting that and clicking on connect. Then we need to let it do its thing and it'll eventually reach 100% and say leaving on the console window. We now need to hit the reset button which is the button on the left side of the device and the device should now boot into the new user interface. And when the device does boot into the new user interface, we can go ahead and select a region, which will be US in my case. Then we can give the device a short name of four characters or less, and then a long name. And once we have that, we can tap on OK, and the device will reboot, and we're all set. Now let's go through the process on the SenseCap indicator from Seed Studio. 
The process is basically the same for this one too, so don't plug it in just yet. Go to select target device, select the sense cap indicator, select tech preview from the firmware options, then go to flash. On the flasher page, skip to step three and turn on the switch for full erase and install. Then turn on the switch for meshtastic UI. Again, even though we haven't turned our device on and plugged it in just yet, go ahead and click on the erase, flash, and install button to bring up the list of serial connections. We can now go ahead and plug in our device and we should see two new serial connections. One will be named indicator RP2040 and this one is not the one we want to select. We want to select the second one, which will be named USB Serial. So go and select that one, then click on Connect, and then the flashing process should begin just like on the T-Deck. Now that we know how to flash both devices, let's take a quick look at the interface. We have a home screen where we can see some general information like if we have any new messages waiting, how many nodes are online, current time, frequency, and more. The next tab on the left below the home tab, we have the node list where we can see the list of nodes in the area. We can scroll through and tap on each one to see info about the node and GPS location if they're sharing their location. To send someone a direct message, we can long press on the node. The next tab below that is for channels, which are basically chat rooms. The tab below that one shows the active chats. Then below that we have maps, and since this device isn't connected to the internet, maps need to be loaded onto an SD card. This process will have to be shown in a separate video. Then below that we have the settings menu where we can change settings, and there's also some tools here. Tools like mesh detector, which will scan for other devices. Signal scanner, where you can choose a node and see what your signal level is to it. Trace route, where you can see the hops taken to reach a node. Statistics, where you, you can see the packet statistics. And finally, we have a packet log, where we can see the raw packets. Now for a quick overview of the devices themselves. The Seed Studio SenseCap indicator has a nice large touchscreen, but no battery or GPS. So it's better suited for use at home or somewhere where you have a power source available. The device has a stand that flips out so you can set it on a desk for use. Then we have the T-Deck, which is better suited for being used as a mobile device and also has a touchscreen along with a physical keyboard giving its BlackBerry appearance. Now there's a few versions of the T-Deck. The T-Deck Base, which is a bare bones device for developers and requires you to supply your own case for it. But this will allow you for having larger batteries. Rocklin offers their own version of this called the T-Deck Complete with their own 3D printed case, 3000 milliamp hour battery, and external antenna. Then we have the T-Deck Plus, which is what I used for this video. Now Rocklin has a chart on their page showing differences between all of them so you can pick the one that best suits your needs. If you're interested in the SenseCap indicator or the TDEX, we'll have affiliate links to them in the video description below. That'll do it for this video showing the new Meshtastic user interface for standalone devices and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss out on any of our upcoming content. Thank you all and have a good one.